The black hole is a cosmic abyss, a bottomless void that can consume any matter that dares cross its path. They've quickly become one of the most captivating and intimidating phenomena since their discovery. First postulated by Albert Einstein, they were essentially a byproduct of his field equations, an extrapolation of mathematics which predicted under enough gravity, space-time itself could become so curved that it would form something known as a singularity, a single location of infinite density. All matter entering this region becomes completely disconnected from the rest of our universe, lost forever and adding whatever mass it consumes to its own, thereby increasing its strength and also its size. But if stuff is able to fall into yet never out of black holes, what's to stop them from growing forever, feeding on matter endlessly until they eventually consume the entire universe? That's actually a really good question and something that I always used to worry about as a young kid marvelling at the wonders of space. Over the last few decades, it's become a heavily debated area, especially since, according to Einstein's equations, there isn't an actual limit on the size of a black hole. In theory, one could consume all the matter in the known universe. But for reasons we'll go into in this video, it's likely that black holes do indeed have a realistic size limit to how big they can get, somewhere around the region of 270 billion solar masses, around four times larger than the current largest black hole ever observed in the universe. TON 618 is the largest black hole we have ever observed. It's a quasar, situated around 18 billion light years away, and is so large that it's given birth to a completely new category of black hole, the ultramassive black holes. It has a total mass of 66 billion times that of our sun, which is more than all the stars in the Milky Way galaxy combined, which add up to only 64 billion in comparison. This number of 66 billion solar masses is actually quite important and something we'll come back to later. TON 618 is the largest single mass object we have ever discovered and is likely to be pushing the very limits of what's possible given the laws of physics. To understand why this is the case, we first need to take a deeper look into what a black hole really is and how they grow in the first place. At its very core, the centre of a black hole is a singularity, an incredibly strange and fascinating object that has baffled physicists for over a century. It describes a point in space-time that has no volume, yet infinite density. Everything that falls into it, or that will ever fall into it, will all end up in this one location in space, or you could say, moment in time. Having zero size means even if a black hole had the mass of our sun, or a billion suns, the singularity would appear the same. It would still have zero size, something that's a little meaningless for our three-dimensional experience of reality. We can't ever visualise a singularity in this way. What we actually see is something a little different, something known as the event horizon. A point in which all light falls in and cannot get out. A division between the rest of the universe and what lies within. The two can never interact. Whatever's outside the event horizon can never see what's inside. Just like the movie Interstellar, the only way to see inside a black hole is to actually go inside one. Although trying to communicate what you see is a completely different story and that's a video for another time. The point is that the event horizon is the physical representation of the black hole in our universe. Although the singularity has zero size, the event horizon has a measurable three-dimensional size, a size defined by its Schwarzschild radius. This radius is directly proportional to the mass of the black hole itself. A black hole with the mass of our Earth, for example, would have an event horizon only one centimetre in diameter. But a black hole with the mass of Jupiter would be around 3 metres, and one with the mass of our Sun 
around three kilometers. Just outside the event horizon is a very important region that is gonna become key in understanding why black holes have a size limit. A region known as the innermost stable circular orbit, the ISCO. Personally, I'd have added defined at the front just so we could have called it the DISCO, but that's just me. This marks the smallest possible stable orbit a photon can have without falling into the singularity, which is why it's also known as the photon sphere and has a radius around 50% larger than the event horizon. The reason the ISCO is important is because it marks the boundary, the innermost point that an accretion disk can form, the disk of matter that orbits a black hole. Anything that wanders under this boundary is destined to fall in. And this is exactly how most black holes gain mass. Rarely do things fall directly in. Most of the time, it's a dance, a waltz with matter being broken down and orbiting over thousands or millions of years until it loses its angular momentum, eventually falling past the innermost boundary of the accretion disk and into the black hole, adding to its mass. Just like the event horizon, adding mass to black holes also increases the range of their innermost stable circular orbits. But something begins to happen when this orbit becomes too big. As we move away from the black hole, there exists a region where stuff begins to be more attracted to itself than to the pull from the singularity. So it clumps together, forming stars. As the innermost stable orbit reaches this point, there becomes only two possibilities for matter around the black hole. Either it's inside the ISCO and is already doomed to enter the singularity, or it's outside and is stable enough to form stars that achieve a stable orbit. Basically, there's no middle ground, no accretion disk that a black hole of this size can form to pull matter in. Studies in 2015 have calculated that the mass a black hole would need to achieve in order to reach this limit would be around 50 billion solar masses. Though this is calculated for a stationary black hole. And of course, all black holes rotate, with some rotating up to the speed of light. When factoring rotation, the ISCO can be much smaller, allowing them to grow a bit bigger before this limit is reached with lower speeds estimating a mass of around 66 billion solar masses, the exact size of TON-618. With higher rotational speeds, this maximum is even larger, anywhere up to 270 billion solar masses, which is four times the size of TON. That's a black hole 67,000 times more massive than the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy a truly monumental size. So this provides us with an upper limit of what we can expect black holes to be capable of forming through accreting matter alone. But just like Einstein's equations predict, that's not their absolute limit. They can grow even larger by stuff falling directly into them or from mergers with other black holes. When it comes to stuff falling directly in, they will surely catch some stars and dust here and there, but it's unlikely they'd get the huge amounts of mass they'd need to grow substantially, something like the mass of another galaxy. Our universe has matured considerably since the time of Ton, which is a quasar from over 10 billion years ago, back when the universe was much denser than it is today. Galaxies nowadays are far more separated and there just aren't enough galaxy mergers to help ultramassive black holes grow. It's practically a self-balancing equation when it comes to the size of black holes. Yes, they can grow to unfathomable sizes, with those like Tom being able to fit 11 of our solar systems end to end. But with great power comes great stability. Since even with these ultramassive black holes, they eventually lose the ability to pull anything in. And that's one of the things that's always amazed me, how well refined the laws of nature really are. Just as we begin to think that something might be out of control, ready to jeopardize the very fabric of our reality, the laws come together and work perfectly 
to bring balance and harmony back into the universe. <laughs>